need this. It's only full bottle to hold still. So, okay. Um, this is my uh, one of my favorite projects. It's uh, altering technique, uh, but um, it's important for you to prepare your bottle first. This one is just uh, you know decor. You can't uh, open it because uh, I just painted with gesso. Because we will start from bowl like this. Okay, here I have it. Yeah, see, it's a regular green wine bottle. And first thing, uh, I love this wine, okay? So uh, that's why I'm buying this. And I noticed the bowl have really nice shape. And the flat area over here. Uh, so it's perfect to put your embellishments on this point. But um, we have to prepare our surface first. So I'm starting with removing all the labels. It's enough to put your bottle into warm water and then with some kind of sanding tool. Right now I have only this one for my nails, but it's quite okay. Uh, it's not, uh, you know, atomic physics, it's only ball. And you have to sand all your surface. Instead of nice and shiny surface, you want to have uh, those little scratches. It will uh, seal your product and uh, give you really nice grip for all the stuff. Yeah, so. Our first step is just removing everything from our bottle and glue some stuff. So here we will go to another step. You can see it's the same kind of bottle, but here I left a not uh, covered area. I will clean it. And this way you can use this bottle because when you seal it, I can show you this with a sprayer with water. When I spray a little bit water on top of it and use my towel, my color don't get off. So you can clean it, maybe not in dishwasher, maybe not with lots of rubbing, but uh, I make those bottles for my mom. She's making juices and some kind of um, liquors and she wanted to have pretty bottles to give them as gifts. So, after I glue my stuff, here you have only flowers, but you can glue everything. And I will show you this on my workshop project, because the base technique is the same. When you put all this stuff, it doesn't matter if you put paper flowers, or maybe you want to put some laces, like here, some fabrics, some buttons. Uh, you can put everything on your canvas. The important thing is not to melt from heat gun. Not all the kind of plastic melt from heat gun, because here you can see it's a uh, small uh, resin and uh, it's plastic element and it don't melt from heat gun. So you can put whatever you want and create a composition from totally trashes. Like here I have a box that I altered already so many times. You saw it in so many faces. You can see from the bottom it was blue, then it was purple, then it was black and right now it's white. So the base technique is to put everything on gel medium, not on a glue like crafty glue because it will not hold. And then cover everything with few layers of gesso. You can see here I put only two coats. So uh, you can still see a little bit green from uh, uh, from under my layers and with altering glass items i uh, sand my box bo bottle sorry a uh, few times between layers i want to have perfectly smooth pre-gesture surface 
And uh, here you can see that you can uh, um, some colors still blinking. So I still need to add two or four coats of gesso. Important thing is to seal everything from each side. So ta da ta da ta da the magic is happening. And here come really nice uh, prepared bubble. It's still, still it's not perfect because I have only one day to prepare it yesterday um, between Christmas. So still I have a little spot over here that I didn't cover, but all le all, all rest of my bowl is already prepared. And the important thing is also that this one is flat, so it's easier to work with. When you have bottles or items like this, you will need some something to put them on uh, the surface to hold them in one position uh, to not have, you know, uh, those drips from mists, from paints all over your work. And you have to be really careful and go back and clean it. So that's why I didn't want to make this project, but you really insist. So, okay, we will be really careful and, uh, okay. One more thing, um, on this bottle, you can't uh, see it uh, on the main picture because it's uh, behind. I have so many textures and you can see that all surface is not smooth. It's really, uh, uh, it's really um, textured and how I did it. Uh, so I just, uh, mixed my uh, gesso here i have okay here i have gel medium butter gesso and uh, i mix it with magic powder i really love this powder uh, i invented it <laughs> it's the powder powder that you use to create texture paste from everything so if you use it with gesso and you can see that I'm using 13 odds just because it makes half of work for me. It's my palette for uh, products. Okay, and you can see that uh, 13 odds just so is really thick. That uh, gives me perfect cover with uh, less layers of uh, layers layers uh, of product because to make it totally white you really need to work hard and add plenty of really thin layers because if you put a lot of gesso on a paper flower you will lose the texture and you can see it here because my first project was when I uh, didn't work with this technique uh, too much so you can see that those flowers have not so many details as those I'm just covering them with really thin layers and when everything is dry I can go with one of my coloring techniques and I have few of them so it's the perfect start for every kind of project. You can read, uh, I will prepare this texture paste in the meantime, and I will continue talking about gesso because, um, yeah, it's my basic product for any kind of project because it, um, first thing, it makes all those surfaces equal. Uh, there's, it's really important for me when I'm making altar art to have this perfectly even surface because you know paper flowers take um, color totally different than uh, cotton lace than paper so if you combine uh, plenty of uh, products uh, of um, oh my god I lost the word it's not product um, different surfaces and you want to have even color code, coat on top of them it's really hard to achieve this effect so gesso 
makes it really easy because everything is white, but it don't have to be white. If you don't uh, want to start with white project, you can use clear gesso and then it will uh, give you just uh, the grip for all things you can do on top. So we have few techniques that we can work uh, on top of this bottle. Today we will do misting because it's uh, the fastest technique. But uh, I, uh, the one I like the most right now uh, is working with um, acrylic paints, with metallic paints. They are glazed, so they behave a little bit like acrylic and a little bit uh, like uh, like mist because they bleed a little bit. Um, you can see it here because uh, I was uh, painting yesterday with, with them and you can see that my green bleeds a little bit into my gesso. So thanks to that, uh, to this ability, I, I am able to get really nice shadows here, like uh, on this one. But today I want to do monochromatic uh, misting, like with this one. To seal it after I'm done and spraying it with uh, regular acrylic um, uh, fixative. I bought it in uh, in in the market uh, where you can buy stuff to you know rearrange your home, and it works perfectly. I'm using matte or uh, satin uh, fixative, and yeah, and it makes a job. Yeah. So right now I create here really nice heavy texture paste. And I'm looking for some surface that I can apply texture to. Okay, we will open the art journal. Yeah, and you can see when I mixed my gesso with the magic powder, I changed the consistency. Right now, uh, it's really heavy. It's like uh, toothpaste. Or even heavier and you can play with with those textures you can make them really high to get this uh, texture around this bottle you can see it up close I uh, I just tap it instead of um, my palette knife I use a foam Okay, I will put my gloves on and show you. It's really one of the simplest uh, ways to add some texture to your product. Just uh, dab it with sponge. And when you have really heavy paste to work with to add texture, you can see that it's really easy. Okay. Everything is shaking and right now I will show you. Yeah, you can see that I have really nice texture on my paper. Thanks to adding this magic powder, my gesso will dry faster. And if I add really plenty of, uh, of magic powder and get really heavy, heavy, heavy paste, I can make cracks. It will crack when uh, dry. Uh, give you really nice natural cr cracks all over. Okay, so right now I have this bottle and I want to place colors only around the flowers, not on whole bottle, because I think that uh, at the end I will add some metal uh, sentiments, some metal plate. It's uh, Mm, this frame because it's uh, Tim Holtz uh, sentiment inside of uh, Scrapberry's frame that I bought in 30 knots. Okay, so we will start from um, from the darkest color and I want to repeat this palette. Uh, so it's 
four colors, I think, uh, because I want to add uh, a little bit more color. But here I used dark brown, it's a uh, chalk mist. I used per old gold. You can see a little bit shimmer, maybe not in this light, but yeah, it's a little bit shimmering. Uh, today I will use also chalk yellow amber and uh, today I have chalk dirty pink it's really really nice color and I will start with dark brown and I have prepared uh, my mister with water uh, I'm reusing all uh, Prima Cold Blue Mist because, uh, um, to be honest, I don't like their mist. They are uh, sticky, yeah, a little bit sticky for me, but uh, I really like uh, this small misters. So, okay, I will start from adding brown. And on this point, I can have it almost everywhere because come on I really nice sealed everything so I can wash it from areas that I don't like and I'm not doing this only with water but also with the power that the spritz gave me and uh, this technique is more about removing color than adding it to your project I will put just um, a towel under my bowl to not have everything in brown mist okay and again I want to put my brown color in the deepest areas to remove it from uh, the tops of flowers I will use baby wipes and uh, water br brush it's the brush that you can fill with uh, water and have uh, really fast and easy aquarelle effects okay so i'm spraying for the darkest color at first and now i want to seal it a little bit so i will use my heat gun So I'm really sorry about sound, but I still didn't uh, fix my Ranger heat gun, so I have only this loudly one. And there is no way to make this project without heat gun, you would have to wait so long. And the colors will be not so uh, burned. And again, I'm spraying with dark brown and trying to, you know, just heat it uh, at once to seal it in some areas. Thank you. 
Okay, so now all those spots that I have around, I really have to clean them before they uh, decolorize my gesso. If it's too late, you have to use uh, the milk, uh, mm, this kind of cleaning milk that you use in your kitchen, probably. Mm. Yeah, okay. I really don't like those little spraying spots. I know that some of you really like them, so you can leave them if you like. But uh, I prefer soft shadows, so yeah. So right now I have my main coloring done. And I'm just cleaning a little bit uh, the tops of my flowers, you know, those higher points. And I will increase them still with uh, dry brush at the end okay and right now I want to have a little bit of colors but I have to blend them really well so I'm just spray a little bit it's a uh, yellow amber and here I have dirty pink Okay, and when I squeeze my brush, I release a little bit of water, so I'm I am able to really nice uh, to add really nice gradient to my colors. It's really good tool when you coloring stamps or um, doing stuff like that. I do not color the coloring but I really like to use those brushes in my works. Yeah and right now I'm just adding shadows to my work and uh, I use the rule that closer to my composition the color should be darker. Further I go the colors can be a little bit lighter. All those little mistakes we can uh, fix later with uh, gesso or removing um, the colors with uh, some kind of preparates. Uh, the, the color mist you can remove with those sprayers to, to, uh, or um, you know, uh, liquids that you use you use to clean your kitchen basically, and they will remove the color until the, the, the white background. Because right now, with baby wipe, I can also smooth the color, and it's the next thing that Jesu gives me all crayons or colors like. Um, water-based uh, colors, gelatos, and also uh, Indian ink from those faber castell smokers. Thanks to adding gesso uh, underneath, uh, you have this ability to smooth the color, to move it, to spread it, to add a gradient. It's really nice. Lately, I'm playing a lot with art journal. I'm not showing those because those are only backgrounds who want to look at my backgrounds. But I have really lots of fun, and still, just is my favorite mixed media video. Okay, and from one side, I have uh, pink, and from the other side, I want to go a little bit with yellow. And important thing is that from all those uh, water-based uh, mists, uh, including 30 knots uh, media that are water-based, like mists, like our basic lane of uh, little uh, water-based uh, paints, when you heat them with heat gun, 
the colors are different. They are a little bit, uh, and on gesture, they are a little bit lighter. So from, from yellow amber, I have really nice bright yellow and I want to burn it. So I'm using it again. Yeah, so unfortunately, I have to use a lot of heat gun today, so... Okay, and uh, right now, I want I add a little bit color here in the background, and you can see I have just stain, and I want it, uh, my color to go smooth one into another, and all of them into white. So I just need to, you know, shadow it. It's a wet towel and I'm just rubbing the excess. It's really time consuming technique. It's really time consuming project. But I think that effect is uh, totally worth it. And I really like those 
those techniques it relaxed me to to make projects like this and this technique fast step with gesso is similar to almost all my projects and a few of my classes so I really like to start with the white gesso and textures yeah, and I would like to have my uh, creases in white, the flower petals and uh, my elements, so I would have to dry brush it, but I still want to have more, oops, shadowing first, so, and hold my bowl right now, have those um, smudges, and uh, you can see that I already hit it with heat gun a lot so I can remove it and I will have to paint it over to finish this this project will take me some time but basic techniques you can watch right now okay so I'm adding a little bit more of my colors and again it's um, yellow amber my favorite color uh, that goes great with all the other colors from 30 knots palette now brown okay something oh I almost finished it okay just okay a little bit uh, instead of mists you can also use really nice things okay that we have in the 30 knots store I just need to find one Okay, I have them. You can use also those inks. Um, those are not splashings. It's uh, water-based ink, and we have it in amber yellow color. It's especially for me and uh, Bordeaux. And uh, I think that we have only basic palette because you can mix them together and create your own colors. But I really like those things and they will work um, quite nice on projects like this as well because you can see that from, from mist I have this light uh, yellow color and you can see it already here that it's the same color and here is really a nice light yellow. And here it's really dark and when I apply it on my project you can see that it's much more darker than mist okay so again I am going a little bit um, outside my flowers and this time I'm also making few 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 drops from each color I will use Yes, so a little bit yellow amber and to to make it perfect it just take a lot of going and, re and going in and removing uh, the colors yeah I want to have clean brush and right now again dark brown here and there I'm trying to add as much color in the deepest areas of my sculpture. I call them sculptures. They are not sculpted, but um, if you add enough of the gesso into your paper, you can see that it's almost like sculpture. It's really, um, but only mobile paper react like that when you make it wet and then dry again it becomes stiffer yeah okay so while i'm doing that and let me ask you how was your christmas what are you what are your plans for in coming year especially crafty plans because i spent my christmas really awesome we were in poland to visit our family and I really love this time of 
year I always loved Christmas, but right now it's our one and only opportunity to meet all our folks. So I love it. It's not like re Inca to distress pad, but it's something similar. It's very concentrated ink, but not the same that is in distress. Um, if you use the re Inca and put re Inca on your um, finger, it's a little bit um, like oily thing, and uh, those are really. Um, I will show you that in one minute, okay? This baby can rest a little bit and get dry, okay? I will show it to you on paper. Here I have my journal, okay? Those things I can remove. Yes, yeah, so here I will spray again. Okay, I'm out of stuff to clean my desk. Okay, here I have mist and here I have ink. Yeah. I will take it, I will take two brushes and do it just in the same moment. Yeah, you can see the difference in color. This one is a little bit more intense, but when you spray it with water, um, yeah, they becoming almost the same. It's totally the same color, but uh, this one is more uh, intense but it's not oily it's just like really intense watercolor and you can of course have fun and play with it yeah and on gesso you can see that color uh, looks a little bit uh, different it's a little bit lighter than here on not prepared uh, on regular paper yeah okay let's go further on so again, I will put my heat gun and I will read chat for the minute. So if you have any questions, just write them down. Oh, <laughs> eat less, okay. <laughs> I meant crafty plans. <laughs> Before I dry it completely, I want to add a little bit more shadowing. So again, just wet uh, towel. I like the fluffy ones like this one. It's just, uh, you know, old uh, towel I cut for pieces because they make better gradient. And it's easier to make something like soft ombre with them. Okay, I'm trying not to smooth those uh, spots I have here. I made them on purpose, so I don't want to cover them. Okay, right now a little blow. <laughs> Okay, 
so it's uh, let's agree that I'm really glad with my colors and now I can do dry brushing so to make dry brushing I will need my palette I will just remove this hair silk from top um, yeah and uh, on this point, it's really important to have um, your project dry. So it's really highly possible that my colors start to bleed. And you have to repeat uh, those stuff really a few times to have this, this effect. Because you add colors, then you add dry brushing then again add colors and dry brushing and it takes ages and ages and ages um but yeah it's something like decoupage when you add plenty layers of uh, fixative and then just uh, remove it all with sanding paper okay now we need dry fluffy brush fluffy one like this one or this one they are really like makeup brushes they are really really soft and they have to be and it have to be dry because we don't want to paint our project we just want to brush it then i take a little bit of product and you can see that it's only a little bit it gives me really nice thin layer and I just go and barely touch my flowers and blend a little bit my background. One of my first workshop techniques was blending with wet gesso. And uh, I think I still uh, really like this. Uh, blending technique because when we use gesso on top of water reacting products the colors bleed a little bit and it's really easy to have really nice blendings And in this way, I am adding those really nice, gentle shadows. Okay. This project should, should be called Everything About Jesu, because uh, basically, it's all about Jesu. <laughs> Okay, right now I need to dry it because my colors start to ble bleed. So the the only thing that we can do is just to dry it with heat. And Okay, it was really thin coat, so right now my second brush is already wet because uh, I put it into water after I dry brush it. So again, I'm taking a clean brush, tap a little bit outside and again just add those really nice subtle shadows to your project. And on this step, you need to move really fast because when colors start to bleed and you will not hit them, they will seal with those not necessarily wanted spots and everything. So, again, uh, I'm brushing a little bit 
outside because you can I don't know if you can see it my colors I add them only here but they already spread since here with this really soft shadow and I really like this effect come on tell me that it don't look really cool with those white edges and so I remove it all the camera It's impossible to make live show with whole product uh, project. I have few tricks for the balls, so I can finish it during the workshops. But um, yeah, to, to create project just like this, it takes a long time to dry. To be honest, because all those uh, layers of gesso. The, the best is just to leave it for a natural dry then it will not peel off even if it catch a little bit of water so basically right now I should add again the layer of colors but I really like this soft effect so I don't know what to do I will add pink one okay Oh, and I can show you even uh, on the dry surface when you use gesso, even on the wet color, you can see that with brush you can just tint your. Oh, I don't know if you can see this subtle difference. No, probably not. But you can tint your gesso a little bit and have really nice and smooth uh, ombres and shadows in your work okay i need my water brush and i don't see it okay here it is because i did so much pink it's already brown uh, pink inside you can see you can also uh, fill it when you open it you can fill it with uh, any color of mist that you want and add it from brush but I prefer to use, uh, use this water area just for water. If you're wondering what the music is in the background today, it's Roxette. I don't know why I have such a face for Roxette right now. So, okay. And you can see that I uh, applied weight. I will just seal it. Okay, I have a uh, last brush to make uh, this dry brushing technique. This one is really small, but it's still fluffy, you can see. Okay, it's not, it's clear just so, and I want white one. Oops, too much. Okay, just a little bit white to have this nice color transitions. Okay, a little bit color and at once a little bit gesso. This way gesso will catch the color and it will be like acrylic paint, permanent. It will not bleed anymore, but it will be not uh, totally white. So yeah, um, on this point I will probably add a few more layers of uh, my color and my white because you can see that one hour takes me just to add colors. So yeah, but the effect, come on, 
the ready work. Uh, here I use uh, ultramar ultramarine, indigo, and uh, lime and amber yellow. And here you have brown, amber yellow, and dirty pink. And here on our main project we have um, chalk dark brown, we have um, old gold, and we have lilac. Yeah, here you can see a little bit of lilac over there. And uh, I just they feel like uh, pink and purple and probably red, but I don't like red, so I cannot say nothing about red. And they just make all browns pop. They just change a little bit the shades in, in those deepest areas. And yeah. So I still need to work on that. I think that in two weeks or something like that, I will show you whole collection of bottles because my mom had birthday and I think that till then I will be ready with all of them. So do you have any questions, guys? Uh, anything I... Oh, and the uh, last thing, the finishing touch. Uh, those are uh, spots from splash inks yeah so basically it's my tracer technique and i hope that someone will make use of it and if you use it please just tag me or mark me or let me know i'm really dying to see your projects uh, with those um, yeah the texture makes everything here i want to to have it you know perfectly smooth but all the others will be with this uh, this nice texture add-on and i showed you how i did it and we have it here in my journal here 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 yeah you can see how color changed it's almost white and it was yellow is because of gesso and you can see that this texture stays and again i did it with uh, regular sponge and really heavy paste i make it with uh, 30 knot gesso and um, <clears throat> magic powder okay i will turn off the recording and still stay to answer your questions but i saw that marta links everything thank you so yeah i will stop